G'day everyone, this is day three. Today we've got a metal detector. Uh, it's a simple heterodyne metal detector. It has a search oscillator, which is a Colpitts oscillator, um, with a, about a 10 microhenry coil for searching uh, for metal. It has a reference oscillator, which is a 3.579 um, color burst X tool Pierce oscillator. And it has a mixer and an audio amplifier that basically just mixes the two signals together and produces a uh, low frequency baseband tone which is then amplified and you know, you can hear it. Um, circuit's pretty simple, I haven't put it in a pretty uh, enclosure or anything yet and as such it's a little bit unstable, please forgive me for that. I had some problems with the, um, the reference oscillator injection locking the, um, the search oscillator so I had to use rather weak coupling into the, um, into the mixer and eventually I ended up using harmonic um, mixing so that the uh, the reference oscillator is now actually operating uh, at twice the frequency or of the um, the search oscillator which also helps with uh, stability because uh, this is running out at fairly high RF frequencies the most metal detectors would typically run at a couple hundred kilohertz whereas you know, this is operating at 3.5 megs or thereabouts the, uh, but the harmonic mixing seems to, to keep the injection locking under control. I, I think if I probably built it on uh, a circuit board with better RF hygiene as far as the layout goes, it would, uh, it would work better. And probably the injection locking might go away. Alrighty, let's turn it on. I haven't bothered to null it or anything. Here's some metal. The, the design's not particularly critical. Um, you can build it pretty much however you like. It's just You can hear it's drifting as it warms up. Uh, there's a polyvericon capacitor here which is used for nulling. You can set it so it's at zero beat um, with a, you know, no metal near the search coil. You can make the search coil bigger or larger. You could, uh, you could potentially use a, a LC oscillator for the reference oscillator and you know, run the whole thing at a much lower frequency. As usual, um, I'll talk more about this when I write up the circuit on my website. Yeah, um, please excuse me if I don't write up for a few days as things are a bit busy at the moment but I, I will definitely write up each and every project that I've been putting up here with details about uh, some of the design decisions and um, you know, general hints and tips about how to get them working. The uh, individual circuit modules as you can see here, the, you know, the oscillator and the mixer, they will probably become useful to us later and they're, they're useful modules on their own. Um, I was thinking that maybe I might have uh, a day or two dedicated just to basic mathematics, how to bias transistors, things like that, just you know, hints and tips for, um, for how to use BJTs and, and FETs and diodes etc. I, I, I don't want to terrify anyone with the mathematics but uh, unfortunately you have to be able to do, you know, it really, if you know Ohm's law and the diode equation and a couple of rules of thumb, that's really all you need to do all of the projects that I'm, that I'm going to show here. Alrighty. Um, until tomorrow, have a good evening.